If you're a computer user, you probably need a word processor, a spreadsheet program, a database manager, probably also a communications package. But with the high cost of most business applications and the increasing desire to have individual applications communicate with each other, many computer users are turning to integrated software packages that combine all the basic functions into one program. Today, we'll take a look at the new generation of integrated software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Cardinal Technologies, designer and manufacturer of advanced personal computer systems and communications peripherals, including multimedia and graphics products. Cardinal Technologies, where computer products are designed and manufactured in the USA, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Chaffe. What's an old Apple II doing over here? Well, to show you the very first successful integrated software package called AppleWorks. It first shipped in 1983 and it sold over 4 million copies. And it really is integrated software. I can pull up, for example, a word processor file over here. Uh, a letter I wrote, we can hear the drive cranking away as it pulls the file off the floppy disk. And there's a word processing document. I can go back in here and say I want to work on a database. And this is my mailing list database. And again, I can crank it up off that floppy drive. And to prove I even have a spreadsheet in here, I can say I want to work with this spreadsheet budget program I put together. And after a lot of cranking, because it's a spreadsheet, we'll actually see the third function inside AppleWorks. And there is a spreadsheet. Well, integrated software has indeed come a long way since then with some of the new integrated packages offering very powerful features. Today, we'll look at the best of the new integrated programs, including LotusWorks, PFS WindowWorks, BeagleWorks, and ClarisWorks. Now, one of the leading integrated software programs on both the Mac and the PC platform is Microsoft Works. And the latest version, Microsoft Works for Windows, has become a popular choice for small business owners. The Protokovich family runs a small mom-and-pop vending machine business in Baltimore. They work out of their home. Terry is the office manager. Frank is on the road servicing the machines. They don't have a lot of time to learn how to use standalone software packages, so they decided to buy Microsoft Works for Windows to use in their business. Terry says with that one program, she can keep track of all their vending machines. I have it all set up where it will tell me anything I need to know about all the stops, individually or as a group, um, all my tax information, anything the government wants is there. <laughs> and uh, it does charts for me if I want to see a, a visual chart of how they're doing. And it also prints out my route sheets. The route sheet includes all the possible items Frank can use to fill the vending machines at a particular stop. She uses the spreadsheet module to create the layout for the route sheet. The item descriptions come out of the word processor, and she uses the database manager to keep track of inventory. With a one-person office staff, Terry Protokovich says she can't afford to waste time, and that's one reason why she likes the new Works for Windows. One major thing that I really like is um, when I go to print route sheets out, that's real time-consuming. I can uh, send it to the uh, print manager in Windows, so it can print and I can continue working and doing other things. It's really helped a lot. The major growth area for PCs and integrated software is the small business market. And while some mom and pop operations are afraid to convert from their old paper systems, Terry Protokovich will never look back. If I didn't have the computer, I wouldn't be able to keep track of the business. I really wouldn't. It would be, I can't imagine doing it on paper. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. Good software evolves, and that has certainly been the case with integrated programs. Here to show us the latest evolution of two popular products are Tom O'Shea of Lotus and Henry Howey of Spinnaker. 
Hank, I know you're the wrong guy to ask because you're prejudiced here probably, but these integrated products are getting so powerful, certainly as you'll show us in PFS Window Works, that you wonder why anybody wants to buy standalone products and pay for it and tie up their entire hard disk and so on. What's the trade-off? What do you lose by going into an integrated software program? Well, I guess uh, by definition probably not much in, in, in my view, certainly. Uh, you know, for someone who works with a standalone, that may be true, but uh, for most people, they need a broad, just a variety mm -hmm. of applications and a very broad offering in terms of those applications. And I think, you know, as you'll see, that's certainly the case with today's integrated applications. All right, well, let's take a look at LotusWorks, which really has an evolved program, as I mentioned earlier. It's been through many generations and many names. Mm -hmm. This is the latest version of LotusWorks, version 3, and, and show, us, show it to us, Tom. Okay. The first, the first thing that the uh, previous versions of uh, the previous users of LotusWorks will notice is that we've added a much more colorful introductory screen display. LotusWorks contains a word processor, a spreadsheet based on one, two, three, a database that reads and writes DBase files, a communications facility. We also have a charting tool in the spreadsheet, and we've added a context-sensitive online interactive tutorial. Mm -hmm. We get into the program. Another thing that uh, users will notice is we've added pull down. We've added overlapping, multiple resizable windows. These windows can be moved anywhere on the screen. Here I've got a word processing window. Uh, it contains many of the elements that you would find in Windows 3.0. For example, a maximize button mm -hmm. and a minimize button. We have a scroll button, so you can scroll through the window, and we also have elevator bars. Uh, we've added pull-down menus that end in dialog boxes in a novice mode for those users who are, stu who are using mm -hmm. the program for the first time. In novice mode, you get long commands, as you can see over here to the right. You can turn that off by hitting Alt-F10. And uh, if we go down and do print layout, you can see that you can actually move your dialog, mm -hmm. box, dialog boxes anywhere on the screen. It's very useful if you want to do something in the spreadsheet, for example, and see where your ranges are. In addition, if you get into the word processor, we've added font support, which we didn't have before. If I select style, header, I can get into a header that I've created. I'm writing a document here for a company called Smith Financial Planners, and if I want to attribute the header, I select font, and we give you a complement of uh, mm -hmm. Bitstream fonts. These are fonts we license from Bitstream. Uh, there's a serif font, a sans serif font, a symbol font, and a monospaced font. Uh, these go in point sizes up to 72 point size. In addition, we've added integration. So if I select Edit, Link, Spreadsheet, I can get a pop-up list of all my spreadsheets. And you'll notice here we have viewers as well, yeah. so you can see into the spreadsheet before you retrieve it. And you can also get a pop-up list of range names or hard type in a cell address if you'd like. You can integrate a graph into the document, which is a new feature we've added. And if I go down here, I select Edit, link, graph, and I could get a pop-up mm -hmm. list of my graph right. names and the spreadsheets associated with them. We've added a print preview capability, so if I go into File, Print, Screen Preview, you'll be able to see this compound document that I've created, which contains a graph and a spreadsheet, and has the header attributed in 18-point type. Real quick, Tom, show me the tutorial part of this you mentioned. Sure. Uh, we found that a lot of users for example, portable users, maybe they can't carry their manuals with them, uh, like online tutorial. If I hit Alt F1, you can quickly go into the tutorial, and I'll take you through the first few screens that you would see if you went through the tutorial the first time. But it's actually more context sensitive if you went into the help system. Mm -hmm. You'd actually get into a mini lesson. The tutorial contains over five hours of online help. So it's a real tutorial, because sometimes these online tutorials it's are kind of It's a real tutorial, exactly. And it's an interactive tutorial. I don't have time to show it all yeah. to you, but you can go in there and actually uh, type in the keystrokes and learn the product that way. Okay, okay. LotusWorks version 3, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I want to move and go back to Hank now and talk about PFS Window Works. Now, we looked at an integrated package in the DOS environment. Your new product does work under Windows. Tell me about it. Uh, sure. Uh, what we'll, do, we'll show today, Stuart, is uh, the word processing application spreadsheet and graphics okay. module of the program. Here I have a standard word processing document, as you can see in Windows. I can make my window full size here. I can even view it in, in, a, in a smaller size to get a better idea of what's going on on the page. Again, mm -hmm. by virtue of Windows, this is full-time WYSIWYG. Um, let me just get back to where we were here. Again, this is a sales report. What we're going to do is add some, add some numbers and graphic elements to it. So let me 
open a spreadsheet that we've done. As you can see in WindowWorks, we can do all our fonts and textiles or mm -hmm. whatever in the program. Let me just select a range here of data and copy. Now I'm going to go to the graphics module of the program. And this is how easy it is to create a, a graphic element in WindowWorks. So just select paste. Auto refresh will ensure that as I change the data, it will update mm -hmm. throughout the program. And there's our chart that represents our data. If I want a better idea of what those uh, bars stand for, I just click legend and it automatically gives me one. Um, if I want to change the scale, I just click on it. We're at increments of 1,000 here. I'll go to 2,000, mm -hmm. like so. And I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard. Copy. Now go to the word processing document again. And under edit, select paste object. Once again, auto refresh. There we have it. Yeah. As you can see, the text wraps around the frame. That could be mm -hmm. anything. That could be another text box, a picture, or as I say here, an interactive graphic. I can resize can size, yeah. by grabbing it. Let me just put in a frame, frame around it as easy as this. OK. Now what I'll do is tile up the three applications that we're working in here. So we can see over here is our word processing module, my mm -hmm. graphics module, and my spreadsheet. So the viewers can get a better look. I'm just going to get the graphics module out of the way, minimize it, and tile again. There we have the chart, and here we have the spreadsheet where the data came from. Now, what our users ask us is, is that when data changes and they have it linked throughout the program, right. they don't want to have to go yeah. back and forth and, and have to get at it again. So what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to change our 2885 sales number to 4 million and watch the chart in the word processor. As you can see, it changes yeah, as well. Yeah. Well, that's real integration. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, just a couple of seconds left. What's, what's the price point on these products, Tom? What about LotusWorks? Uh, LotusWorks sells for $149, and at that price point, we think it's an attractive alternative to Windows 3.0 for those users who don't have the machine capacity to mm -hmm. handle Windows. And what about PFS WindowWorks? Uh, a, win, WindowWorks sells for uh, $199 at suggested retail mm -hmm. Stuart, and mm -hmm. again, far below what you'd pay even for a standalone yeah, yeah. application. That's great. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank well, you. one of the best integrated packages for the Macintosh is a relative unknown called Racktime 3, developed by a Canadian software company. But Racktime 3 is getting rave reviews from those who use it. Pitt Turner is a project manager for Pacific Bell. He's responsible for this $40 million construction project. He does his job with a Mac CX and Ragtime 3. It's the only software he uses to handle all the calculations, information flow and database management for the building. Ragtime 3 integrates most computer tasks into one software package so that you don't have to decide ahead of time what you need the computer to do. A lot of what I need is real general. It's word processing, uh, support for documentation processes, it's uh, just general preparation of documents. What I like about Ragtime though is that I can go in thinking in terms of one direction and then if I decide I need a piece of text in the middle of a spreadsheet or a spreadsheet in the middle of text, boom, there it is. It happens. Ragtime 3 is also used here at the real estate division of Pacific Bell. This department handles all the real estate business for all the buildings that house Pac Bell employees. There are about 120 Macs here, all running Ragtime to keep track of leases and property transactions. Some users worry that an integrated package won't have enough power for their needs. But at Pac Bell, the folks who use the computer say that's not a problem. Each of the individual modules is not necessarily as powerful as the standalone programs, which people like to compare them to. But taken as a whole, they are mu much more capable of producing complex documents. I find that most users don't use the power that it's a part of the, the standalone package. The integrated software is kind of geared to the everyday user. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. For Mac users, there are two other good choices for integrated packages, BeagleWorks and ClarisWorks. And here to show us how they work are Mark Simonson of Beagle Brothers and also with us Bob Lisbon of Claris. Bob, let me begin with you at Claris. You have lots of standalone uh, products, word processor, spreadsheet, and so on. 
How do you position something like Claris Works in integrated package? Mm -hmm. Who is it meant for? We really see Claris Works appealing to three kinds of customers. The business generalist, the person mm -hmm. who's not doing one thing every day, but lots of different tasks. Also the mobile professional using Apple's new PowerBook laptop computers. Mm -hmm. And finally, students and educators will all appreciate Claris Works ease of use, integration, of value and performance on mm -hmm. low-end hardware. All right, what about BeagleWorks, Mark? Same positioning? Yes, we're going after the same market. Educational, home, business user. Basically someone who would like six applications for the price of one. Uh, okay, fair enough. All right, show us BeagleWorks. You've got it up on the screen. Okay, as you'll notice, BeagleWorks has word processor, drawing and painting capabilities, a database, spreadsheet, and a communications module. Mm -hmm. I'll just go to a word processor file that I've loaded here and show you how easy it is to incorporate graphics. I've created this graphic in BeagleWorks and all I have to do is select it and press one keystroke to essentially publish it. Uh, publish and subscribe are things that Apple introduced with mm -hmm. System 7. And we've taken them a step farther. Now back in the word processor, another keystroke essentially subscribes to that graphic yeah. and you'll notice I can move it around in the word processor and the text will flow around it to mm -hmm. uh, reflect its new position. Now in publish and subscribe which is essentially a linking of information that's pretty much all I can do. With BeagleWorks we have a thing called in context editing where I can double click on whatever it is I've subscribed to and you'll notice the tools on my toolbar and, and the menus change yeah. so that now I have access to my graphics tools. If, for example, I wanted to choose, uh, say, the color red and uh, fill this letter E with red, I just click right there with the paint bucket and it does it. Uh, when I'm through making my graphic changes, I click back out on the text and continue typing. You'll notice the toolbar changes mm -hmm. again and the menus update. All right, Mark, can I do the same thing with a spreadsheet, pull that into this newsletter? Right. Let's open a spreadsheet and select the area that we'd like to have in the newsletter and publish it, go back to the newsletter, and subscribe to it. And there you see it's in the spreadsheet and it acts just like the graphic that we previously put in. Mm -hmm. I can move it around anywhere I'd like and the text reflows around it very nicely. What about pulling in an actual graphic or a map or something inside the newsletter in addition to that okay. masthead you did? Just happened to have a map of the Great Lakes area. If we publish that and then subscribe to it back in our newsletter, there we have it. And uh, we can also do some nice things like make the text wrap irregularly around the map mm -hmm. just by changing the options to irregular mm -hmm. wrap. And then when I click back on the text, you'll notice that the text is much closer to the map and mm -hmm. I told it to wrap on the wrong side, so I just yeah. moved the map over a little bit. And then it wraps on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can do actually, you can do columns in here, right? Inside. Right. I just select the portion of the text that I want and then go up to the toolbar and tell it how many columns I want. Uh, I selected two columns, and there I have my two columns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, do you need System 7 to run BeagleWorks? You do not. We've made it uh, capable to run with all of these features under System 6, uh -huh. publish and subscribe, the in-context editing. Yeah. All right, let's turn to Claris now. And your interface is slightly different. Isn't your approach different with Claris Works, Bob? Well, it's the same in the sense that the integration is seamless. But what's different is that, as you can see on the screen, instead of having a window pop up around an object that you want to mm -hmm. edit on the screen, what you have here are tools handy on the side, and you can directly apply them to anything that's on the page. So for instance, let's say I were putting together a uh, vacation brochure for a travel agency. I could bring in some text, and this doesn't have to be Claris Works text because our Extend Translators... There's a Word Perfect file. That's a Word mm -hmm. Perfect file. You saw that on the PC. Yeah. Now, this is a full-strength word processing environment, so it's got fonts and sizes and styles, uh, spell checking and thesaurus. It's also got things uh, like footnotes, multi uh, headers and footers, and multiple mm -hmm. columns. Now, let's say I wanted to start adding some graphics to this page. Say uh, I wanted to put that Everywhere Travel company logo up at the top. I'll just paste the name here as a text object, and we'll make it a bit larger. And I'll color it, say, a, a bright red. You notice that once I'm working with graphics, though, up at the top, my menu bar's changed. I used to have the word processing menu bar. 
Now I've got my graphics menu bar, which gives me a lot of the same key commands that made McDraw a bestseller. So, so instead of having these separate modules that you work in here, you really have sort of all the functions available inside whatever document you're in. That's correct. So I could go now and embellish this logo. I could rotate it and mm -hmm. add patterns and colors. But let me illustrate this integration in another way. Let me move down to the middle of my document. And now if I wanted to set up a table with uh, the various vacations mm -hmm. and their prices, instead of having to quit out of the word processor and then start a spreadsheet module, instead I click on the spreadsheet tool and I click and drag. And now I have a full function spreadsheet right in the middle of that brochure. So that's the spreadsheet. That's not a graphic of a, of a spreadsheet. That's correct. You can see up at the top that my menu bar's changed again. Mm -hmm. And I'll just type in a couple trips here. Say there's Nepal is 12 days, and we can go to Thailand for eight days. And you could perform spreadsheet functions right now inside the spreadsheet. That's correct. In fact, uh, one of the other things we can do is have a full spreadsheet view, if that's more mm -hmm. convenient. And here I could yeah, apply any right, of the formulas right. you might okay. imagine. One, th oops, one thing I will do is I'll get rid of these row and column headers so that when we go back to the brochure, it looks more like a table than a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So there's my yeah, table. Yeah. Something else we can do with the spreadsheet is uh, chart the numbers. To do that, I just highlight the cells, and I hit Command-M or Option-Make Chart. It's the same thing you do in Claris Resolve. Mm -hmm. And that's important because if somebody were uh, going from Claris Works to one of our dedicated products, they wouldn't have to learn a whole new program. Now, the chart's a graphics object as well, so I can resize it if I wanted to uh, explode at, out the uh, red slice, I just click on it like that. Something else I can do is click down here on my Claris Zoom Mountains. Mm -hmm. They enable me to get any perspective from 3 to 3200%. And you notice here that, uh, by the way, I can move objects and resize them, that this isn't just a page preview mode. It's a, an actual editing environment uh -huh. Uh -huh. where I can do anything I might do uh, in 100% view. Mm -hmm. Maybe to uh, finish out this page, I'll bring in a picture of one of those Thailand beaches. This uh, was created in Claris Works, not by me though, and uh, it, bringing it in as a picked format illustrates how Claris Works is facile with a variety of file formats. What, what about the database part of this? Could I use that to mail merge here? Absolutely. Uh, if I liked this brochure, wanted to send it out, I could open up a customer list, say, that's a Claris Works database. Mm -hmm. This looks a lot like our FileMaker Pro. And if I wanted to do a mail merge, I customize that brochure with these names and addresses. What I could do is go, go back to the brochure, and over here I'll enter my cursor and type in deer, mm -hmm. and then rather than uh, remember the special symbol, double inverse right, bracket right, or right. something, I just double click on my database, and to enter the name I click on this button, and you see that it yeah, uh, was yeah. inserted there. So it's very easy to do mail merge. There's also a communications environment. Right and some desktop publishing capabilities. Claris Works, BeagleWorks, both very nice. Gentlemen, thank you. That's our look at integrated software. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, Hewlett Packard says, Honey, I shrunk the drives. HP has announced a new matchbook size hard disk drive that can hold 20 megabytes. The mini drive has a diameter of only 1.3 inches. HP plans to use the tiny hard drives in palm top computers and other small portable devices. The Software Publishers Association reports that for the first time ever, Windows applications are outselling DOS applications. Windows products accounted for 49% of all software sold in North America during the first quarter of 1992. DOS software was 41% of sales. Macintosh software represented only 8% of the total. The top-selling software last week for the Macintosh, according to Mac Connection, includes Auto Doubler and Norton Utilities in the number one and two spots. Rounding out the top ten are Disk Doubler and Maxima. Time now for this week's software review with Paul Schindler. You know, I can never get my paper schedule just the way I want it, and as for my three-digit to-do list, forget it. But with Datebook, you have a fighting chance to get organized. Now, each day you can look at either your to-do list, the items carry forward if not completed, or your events for the day. View the day's events as text, a Gantt chart, or a time bar. The week view looks a lot like paper calendars, and in fact you can print it out to fit the popular day timer or Filofax formats. 
A unique feature of this datebook is the busyness indicator. Divide your workday into any three periods you choose, and the calendar shows you, at a glance, with green, yellow, or red bars, whether you are free, slightly busy, or totally crunched. For most of us, the week starts on Monday. In Datebook, the week starts when you say it does. You can use a banner to indicate multi-day events. Datebook comes with a variety of icons which you can use to mark specific types of events. Datebook is $125 from After Hours Software in Van Nuys, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Finally, there's a new computer peripheral out from Nauta Concepts called Backup, but it's not software or hardware. It's an odd-looking belt strap combination that connects your knees to your lower back. Nauta says it significantly reduces back pain for people who spend long days sitting in office chairs in front of computers. The backup sells for $39. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by Cardinal Technologies, makers of the PC-10 personal computer, IBM compatibility in a small footprint integrated unit, Cardinal Technologies, computers designed and manufactured in the USA, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subjects for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use.